Hey harpists and harp lovers, welcome back to another educational harp video. And today we are going to be talking about all things strings. So where to get strings, how to take care of your strings, um, how to string a harp, changing out the strings, how to tie the harp knot, all things strings we will be going over today. My most recent harp educational video was the basics of harp care, which I will link here. Um, and in that video, we go over the basics of caring for your harp and in conjunction of that, the strings of your harp. Um, so for a good foundation on caring for your harp strings in general, um, with the environment that they're kept in and other factors, go and watch that video first and then come back here so you can have a good basis for what we're going to be talking about. There are many different causes for why strings break from environmental factors, a lot of which I talked about in the Basics of Harp Care video, but uh, in short, environments that are cold and dry can cause the fibers of the strings to tighten and cause them to break easily. Um, so you want to make sure that you're caring for your strings by keeping your harp in a temperate, um, humidity controlled and temperature controlled environment to make the harp and the strings last the longest that they can. Besides environmental factors, there are other things that can cause your strings to break. This is like if you have a lever that's rubbing against a string every time you put it up or down or a disc that's wearing a string down. Over time, strings are worn down by the different hardware that they interact with, or the eyelet of the harp where the string enters can slowly wear down the string over time just by being at that angle. So if you notice a string starting to have wear at any point on it, that may be an indicator that it's time to change that string before it breaks. Also, if you notice a string breaking prematurely, um, it could have just been an old string that was maybe in the supplier's supply for a while. Um, usually harp strings can last for several years, but it depends on the material of the string. Some string materials last longer than others, and we'll go into that more when we talk about the different types of strings. But in general, a harp string's shelf life can be anywhere from 5 to 10 years or even more, depending on the environment that it's kept in. If you want your strings to sound their very best, you can follow a string changing schedule that uh, many regulators and harp service professionals recommend. I've seen several professionals and blogs recommend that you replace strings in the first octave of your harp every year and replace the bass wires every couple years to make sure that they have the best rich and clear sound. And then for the rest of the strings in the third, fourth, and fifth octaves can be changed every few years or whenever you think that they start to sound not as good. Basically, whether or not you're following a strict string changing schedule, as long as you're taking good care of your harp and the strings in the environment that it's in and keeping an eye on any wear or issues that come up, you should be good to go. Strings also experience wear whenever you move the harp because the environment that the harp is in and that the strings are in is being changed, it will cause the strings to go under different physical processes, whether that be tightening or expanding, depending on the temperature and humidity. So whenever you move your harp, that's an opportunity for the strings to break as well. If you're going to be transporting your harp a far distance, like if you are shipping it somewhere or if you're driving across the country to move, it is a good idea to loosen your strings considerably so that they don't fluctuate as much with the different changing environments. This also goes for if you are going to be putting the harp in storage or not using it for a while, loosening all the strings can help preserve its life and also preserve the life of the soundboard that they are putting pressure on and extend the life of the harp. Sometimes it's nice to be able to do a full restringing like before a regulation where the regulator can come in and assess your harp uh, without the strings causing any potential issues. When you have a fresh set of strings, your regulator can overlook the uh, issues that maybe a string was having and be able to focus fully on the harp itself and the hardware. 
For example, my harp here was due for a restringing this year, and so I completely restrung it in preparation for its regulation this year. If you decide to do that, it's a good idea to completely do your restringing a couple weeks before the regulator comes, and then that way your harp can be settled with its new tuning by the time the regulator comes to look at it. There are a plethora of reasons why strings break, from environmental factors to hardware rubbing on the string and wearing it down, to just maybe it was that string's time to go. So that brings us to the different types of strings and where to get them. Different sizes and styles and types of harps may require different strings. Depending on the size of your harp and how many octaves it has, you may also be dealing with different materials of strings within the same harp. The three main types of strings that you will encounter are nylon, gut, and wire. You'll usually find nylon strings on the upper registers of pedal harps and also large lever harps. And for small lever harps or lap harps, oftentimes the whole entire harp will be strung with nylon strings. Nylon strings have a very bright and clear sound and often will last a lot longer than gut strings just because of the material they're made of. While small lap harps are often completely strung with nylon strings, on larger lever harps and pedal harps, nylon strings will usually span the zero octave, first octave, and sometimes the second octave. Second octaves on large lever harps and pedal harps can also be changed out with gut strings. Gut strings have a rich, warm sound, but they aren't quite as hardy and durable as nylon strings just because of the material they're made of. Then octaves two through five can be changed out with gut strings. The next category of strings are the wire strings. These bass wire strings cover the entirety of the last two octaves on concert grand pedal harps. And then for smaller size semi grand or petite grand pedal harps, there may be a few down there, but the concert grand has the entirety of the bass strings. Also, on large lever harps, there may be a few wire strings at the bottom of the harp as well. And of course, along with potentially differing materials for the different octaves of strings, the strings themselves are of course different sizes as you can see. Most popular harp makers will have a diagram on their website so that you can find what strings you need and what octaves they belong to. Some harp makers label their strings by measuring in diameter as well. And then there's also the tension of string to take into account as well. String tension refers to the amount of give or take that the string has when played. Basically, how hard is it to pull the string to get a good sound? Harps with higher tension mean that the strings are a bit harder to pull, whereas lower tension strings are a bit easier to play. Pedal harps usually have a higher string tension, meaning that you have to exert more effort on the strings to get the sound but some harps are made to have lighter string tension and it often depends on the playing style of the player of what tension that they're gonna need. When you go to order strings on whatever website you're using or whatever store you're visiting, keep an eye out for the type of tension of the string, whatever kind you're looking at. The different materials of strings can vary in the type of tension as well. Nylon strings can come in both high tension and low tension and the tension of gut strings is typically higher than nylon strings. Higher or lower tension isn't necessarily better or worse. It depends on the player of the harp and what their goals are, what they're comfortable with, and what they feel good playing. Now that we've covered the different materials of strings, the octave layout, and the different tensions of strings, now we can start to talk about the different brands of strings that are out there. The most popular harp string brands here in the US that at least I'm familiar with are the Bow Brand, Bow Brand Burgundy, Premier, Vanderbilt, and Dusty Strings brands. Smaller harp makers may also have their own types of strings that you can buy on their website. A good way to find the right strings for your harp is to go to that harp maker's website and see what strings they sell or recommend. If you go to your harp maker's website, oftentimes they will have a string guide to help you find the strings that you need in the different octaves and whatever layout they have. The place I get most of my harp strings online is harp.com. They have an easy to use string selector that lets me find my brand of harp and order any kind of set or individual strings or octaves that I want. 
I'll also get harp strings at the local music stores that are around that carry them, but I know it's not as easy to find harp strings in local music stores as it is to find them online. When buying your strings online, you usually have the option to buy individual strings, octave sets, or a complete set. The cost of harp strings varies greatly depending on what octave they're in and the material that they're made of. Strings in the upper octave of the harp are usually only a few dollars per string, and that cost increases as you move down the octaves, where the lowest pedal gut strings can be upwards of $20 per string. And of course, prices change over the years, but as of recording this video in 2022, a complete set uh, for a full-sized pedal harp of 47 strings is about $630. Of course, a full set of strings will vary in price depending on the type of harp and the size of it. If you want to save on the cost of strings or if you want to just have some good, reliable backup strings in case you're in a pinch, you can also choose to make a skeleton set of your strings. What this means is that you only purchase the strings that are not able to be interchanged with each other and then you only get one of the strings that are able to be interchanged with each other. For example, on pretty much all harps, the G, A, and B strings are interchangeable with each other because they're the same color and they're also very, very similar in width. So I could take a B string and use it as a G string in pretty much any octave that is on the harp, except for when you start to get into the wire strings, of course, the gut, B string would not be able to work for the wire G string here, but as long as you're within the same material and the same octave, you are able to change out these three strings because of their similar size and their location next to each other. The same goes for D and E for the same reasons. They're the same thickness and the same color. Then of course your C's are red and your F's are black, which means that they are not interchangeable with any other strings unless you don't mind the colors being thrown off a bit. If you're in a pinch, you could definitely switch out a, a G string or an F string, but you would just have to keep in mind that now your pattern is thrown off. So if I wanted to get a skeleton set for each octave, I would get the C string, the F string, a D or an E string, and a G, A or B string. So you have four strings within that octave. Two of them are unchangeable, the C and the F, and then the D and E are interchangeable, and the G, A, and B are interchangeable as well. Also, depending on the string maker and what octave the string is in, some strings may come with several strings in a pack, meaning you have one big long string that you can use several times and will cover two or three uses. This is usually for the upper octave strings that are a lot shorter when you end up cutting them to use. For the zero and first octaves on my harp, I can usually get three uses out of one long string in a pack. And then into the second octave, it's usually just about two uses. And then as you move further down, it's just one big string and that's your string, one use. All right, so now we're going to get to the main event and every harpist's favorite topic, which is tying the harp knot. We are gonna start out just by tying the knot itself and not worrying about any anchors. We'll get to that later. So first you are going to take the string in both your hands. Your left hand will be kind of the hand that holds everything together and your right hand is going to be doing most of the maneuvering. So I'm going to take the end of the string in my left hand and then the long end in my right hand. I'm going to loop it around the back. So you're creating a loop with the long end of the string in the back. Next, you're going to use your left hand to hold everything together and keep it all in one place. Keep it nice and secure. And then with your right hand, you're going to make another loop, this time going around the front of the string. So the first loop, the long end was going around the back, and now it's going to be going around the front. Then you're going to take that big loop and you're going to put it over what your left hand is holding, that first loop that you made. It's going to go over all of that and then you're just gonna pull it tight 
You're going to hold it in place with your left thumb to keep everything there. And then move your thumb out of the way last minute so that you get your nice looking knot. And don't worry if your knot is a little loose at first. It may take some elbow grease to really get it nice and tight, but don't worry because once you thread it and start tightening it and tuning it up, it will cinch up. Next, we're going to go over how to tie the harp knot with an anchor. Anchors are used for the smaller strings so that the string doesn't get pulled up through the sound hole. So I'm going to be doing this demonstration uh, in a large scale form with a pencil acting as the anchor so you can really see what's going on and then we'll do a normal one. So you're going to do the same kind of knot as before with looping around the back of the string with the long end going to make that same loop as before but this time you're going to put the anchor through the loop so that the loop is going over it next you are going to take everything in your left hand like before and hold it all together while your right hand then makes the loop going the opposite direction so remember this one now goes in the front of the string the long end goes in front while the first one went around the back. And then you're going to take that loop, put it over everything just like before. So it swallows everything up that you've been holding. And then you're gonna hold it all together with your thumb, tighten the string and move your thumb out of the way at the last second so that that knot can close over everything all together. And there you have your knot. Again, it will, may not be super tight to begin with, but it will tighten up as you tune it. All right, now I'm going to be demonstrating with an actual string anchor, which is just a bit of larger string that I'm using. So we're gonna go around the back, again, with that long end of the string in your right hand. Your left hand is holding everything together and the anchor is going to be through that loop. So the anchor is intersecting the loop that you just made. The left hand holds everything together while the right hand creates that forward facing loop. So the long end in front, everything goes over what you're holding and then you pull it tight, move your thumb out of the way and give it a good cinch. And there you have your first loop there. And then in this demonstration, I also show a little trick that you can do, which is to make a second loop, which really holds everything in place. So we're gonna do the second loop, just like the first one you did with the long end in the front, and you just put it over there twice. Give a big cinch and it will stay put a lot easier. So some people find it easier to tie the knot first and then slip the anchor in later. So I'm gonna demonstrate that as well. It can be useful to do this method when you're working with springy nylon strings. That's hard to kind of hold it and the anchor at the same time. So you're gonna take your left hand and make an upside down U with the short end. Then with your right hand, the long end of the string, you're gonna take that forward facing loop and then you're just gonna put it over the U, turn the U sideways and cinch it. You are not gonna cinch it all the way though because then you're gonna add in that anchor. You're gonna put it through that main loop that you just made and then you cinch it tight. And of course you also have the option to create the second loop and put that over it as well. I find this method really helpful for, again, the springy nylon strings that are kind of jumping around everywhere and hard to hold down, especially while you're holding an anchor already. And that brings us to our next topic, which I'm really excited to share about, which is the Dusty Strings brand string buttons. This is an awesome invention that I have just been waiting for my whole life without knowing it. Um, they are these really awesome replacements for string anchors. I guess it's a type of string anchor. And what it is, it's just a hard plastic button that you thread the string through and it saves all the trouble of tying the harp knot. So if this is appealing to you, if you aren't very good at tying the knot or you have some mobility issues with your hands or it's just hard for you to do, these are really awesome. And Dusty Strings has an instructional video on how to use them on their website, but I figured I would include one here as well because I used them on my lever harp to give them a go and I really liked it. Just like with the regular anchors, you're going to take the string button in your left hand and the string that you're working with in your right hand. And then you're going to thread that string up through the bottom of the string anchor through the large round middle hole. 
Then you're going to take that string end and thread it back down through one of the side holes. So there's different sizes of side holes for different sizes of strings. So I'm going to use the small hole here for this smaller string. You're going to thread it down through that hole while keeping it in front of the long end of the string. And you wanna make sure that you keep your loop nice and big because you're going to need to thread back through it later, so don't cinch it tight just yet. Then you're gonna take that short end and thread it back through the opposite corresponding side hole. And as you thread it up through that small hole, you're going to put it through the loop that you had before. And then you are just going to pull the long end of the string at the bottom to cinch it tight. And there you have your string button. Are you interrupting? Are you interrupting? Look, what is this? What is it? Chance, what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, oh, he's so excited. Oh, they're so excited. What? What is that? What is that? What? You want to eat? What? Chance? Are you hungry? Oh, are you boys hungry? <laughs> Do you want some dinner? <gasps> Do you want dinner? You want dinner? Okay, let's go get dinner. You want dinner, Gunther? Okay, let's go. Now that we're all set with our knots, we're gonna go through the whole entire string changing process for both lever and pedal harps at different angles. So first we're gonna start out with unwinding the string. Of course, if you're starting out with a broken string and that's why you're replacing it, you won't need to do this step. So you can go ahead and skip that. And then I also take this opportunity to clean the pegs and the tuning pins and all the hardware that the string was against just because it's hard to reach but in between those areas when you have a string there so it's always nice to get some dusting in while you can then you're going to of course tie your knot we're going to skip over that because we already did that and then you're going to thread your string through once your string is through the eyelet you're going to then thread it through the peg here make sure that your peg is facing up and down and make sure that you put the string lined up where it needs to be in relation to the pegs and the lever that it's assigned to and any discs for pedal harps. The next step that we do isn't 100% necessary, but I find it super helpful for making sure the string stays put while you're winding and doesn't try to fall off the end of the peg. So you're gonna pull your string nice and tight and take the long end in your right hand while you hold the string tight with your left hand. You're going to thread it underneath the peg from behind. So make sure it goes underneath and behind the string that you're holding in your left hand. And then you're going to pull it all the way through, make sure the loop doesn't get caught on any hardware, and make sure that loop is again behind the main part of the string that runs through the lever. Then you're going to take that long end of the string and wrap it around the front of the peg. So it's like you're creating a little saddle for that main part of the string to be in. So I'll show you from a different angle over here. We're gonna go from the back and underneath, so from behind the main part of the string and underneath the peg. Make sure that string is nice and tight while you're pulling it. And then you're going to take it and wrap it around from the front to the back so that it locks in that main part of the string. And this will keep the string from falling off the end of the peg because it's being held in place. Then from there, you can tighten your string and get it up to pitch. Use your thumb to keep the main part of the string from getting in the way of the part that's winding. So I wanna make sure that you are pressing the main part of the string towards the neck to make sure it's winding towards the neck. If it winds away from the neck, then that's where you can get it falling off the edge. All right, we're gonna do a quick run through again from far away now, a different angle. 
So first, we're gonna unravel the string if it's not already broken, take it around the back, clean any hardware that the string was interacting with. You're gonna get out your string, unravel it, and then thread it through. You can tie your knot before or after threading it through, it doesn't really matter, but this time I'm gonna do it after threading it through. And then you're gonna go ahead and tie your knot, get it all ready to go, nice and tight. Then you're going to finish threading and then pull it tight and thread it through your peg. Make sure the hole in the peg is facing up and down, and then that way you can thread your string through nice and easy. Pull it tight, and now we're gonna do that special saddle. So I'm bringing it around the back, wrapping it around the front, and pulling it tight. Then we're gonna bring it up to tune, making sure to hold the string towards the neck as you wind so it winds the correct way, and then bringing it up to pitch. Here's another walk through with a pedal harp now because it's mainly the same, but the way that it interacts with the hardware is a little different. So here I'm tying my knot nice and tight. I'm gonna do a double knot on this one. So it's nice and secure. And we're all set to go. Then I'm going to thread it through Make sure it's lined up with the discs, so it needs to be going in between different prongs on the discs and of course lined up with the peg. Then I'm gonna do the cinching method with the little saddle, so I wrapped it around the back. Make sure the string doesn't get in the way of any hardware and that it is nice and tight. Then we're going to pull it back around the front so it makes that saddle and then use your thumb to press in while you tune so that the string winds correctly towards the neck and then just bring it up to tune just like normal. A tip I forgot to mention before is to leave the end of your string intact after you've changed it, at least for the rest of the day or even a couple days after you've changed it. This is so if your string breaks again, you have the spare string to use that you can just unwind and keep using. Depending on where the string broke, it will help you have more string to work with rather than just throwing out uh, the whole entire length that you cut from the end. So working with wire strings is quite a bit different than working with gut and nylon strings because the materials are super different. Um, I was having a lot of fun with this, uh, my lowest octave C. You can see the material is super different, um, so it takes some special care. And um, don't do that at home. <laughs> They're very springy. <laughs> um, so you're going to want to have some safety goggles and gloves. Uh, this is just because when you're working with uh, wire strings, they can be kind of pokey and little pieces can fly off. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, of course, if you don't already have a broken string, is to unwind the string. This is where the gloves really come in handy because you're going to need to finagle that string end out from inside the pin. And sometimes they can get wrapped around uh, pretty, pretty gnarly. So I got mine free. You can see it there. It has that bent end that I had to kind of strong arm into getting out. And then I'm using the wire cutters to cut the string out from the harp and then remove the peg from the back because you can't pull the washer through because it's a metal washer and foam washers. Then I'm going to clean my different hardware that the string was in front of. And we've got our string, our wire string. When you are unwinding it, you want to be really careful because again, they're really springy. So always keep both hands on either side of the string while you're unwinding it and don't do it right next to your harp so that the string can bust out and smack it because that is no fun. So be really careful while you're unwinding it. Always keep two hands on them. Then you're going to, of course, like normal, thread it through the back of the harp and thread it through the hole of the peg. Make sure everything lines up with your discs or levers. The thing that you're going to do that's different for wire strings, this is really important, is that you 
need to give the wire some slack before you start tuning it. So you can bring it down a couple inches from where it's at its tightest and it can make it a little bit tricky to work with, but it's really important because if you just wind it as is at its tightest, it'll just break automatically. Um, this will help the wire be able to actually wind around the string. So you're going to thread it as normal, make sure it's lining up nice the way it needs to. And I'm gonna be having a close up shot for this later as well. So you can really see how it looks while it's winding. And then of course, cut the wires at the end with your wire cutters. Here's our close up shot. So I'm unwinding it right now. I chose to stand at the front of the harp while unwinding it because it was easier to reach for this angle. We're going to clean our hardware while the string is out and then thread the string through the sound hole and through the tuning peg. Make sure it's lined up with the hardware it needs to be lined up with. And then this is the important part. You're gonna measure up about two inches from where it's at its tightest and then let it back down to create that slack, about two inches. Then you're going to start winding. This part can be pretty tricky with wire strings because they wanna spring around everywhere. You really kind of have to strong arm it into the way that you want it to go. At this point, while you're bringing it up to pitch, uh, don't be alarmed if the wire starts to make some kind of scary noises. It's just the sound of the wire settling and getting used to being in its new position. It's totally normal. So again, pushing it so it's winding towards the neck of the harp and don't let it spring around, especially with that string end. You might need to uh, finagle it around the different hardware that it wants to run into as you are winding it around. So just take it nice and slow. If it is making you nervous, sometimes it can be hard to work with. Again, they're very stubborn. So just take it nice and slow and don't worry. If it's difficult or intimidating changing out your wire strings on your own, you can always ask your teacher or get a harp technician to assist you. It definitely can be pretty tricky the first couple times, but as with anything with practice, it gets easier. Let's talk about some troubleshooting tips for when you're changing out your strings. If you find that you're running into troubles with strings breaking or not keeping a pitch while you're trying to change them out, here are some steps to go through to figure out what's going on. First thing you can do is to make sure that the string is winding correctly and not slipping off of the pin. You can ensure this by using your thumb to hold the string against the neck of the harp while you wind so that it doesn't fall off the end of the pin while you're trying to tune it up. Check if there's any point of contact on the string where the string may be rubbing against something or fraying. If you have a string break while you are restringing and tuning it up, it can be helpful to look at the point on the string where it broke to find what caused it. Check your knot, whether or not it's around an anchor or just a freestanding knot to make sure it's tight and not slipping. I found that when you're restringing a harp and trying to bring it up to tune, if it keeps dropping down and falling out of tune, most of the time it has to do with the knot that you've tied. What you can do when that happens is to go ahead and unwind it, check the knot and make sure it's cinched. A lot of times the knot will become cinched as you're bringing it up to tune and the thing that's making it drop down is that the knot finally cinched and now the string is no longer tight the way that it was. So all you have to do is just unwind it, make sure that the knot is cinched and then just wind it back up again. If none of the above solutions are working for you, you may just need to get a new string. Your string may be old or just a bad one in the batch or defective. Signs of an old string that you can keep an eye out for is a lot of marbling in the string or discoloration, especially when you bend the string and it crackles a lot, like more than it should. All harp strings will have a little bit of give, especially gut strings, just because of the material they're made out of. But if you notice that even the slightest little touch of the string will cause it to break in, like that as if you were to bend it a lot, then that's a sign that it's an old string. Also, if you find that your string is starting to fray down the middle of the string while you are bringing it up to pitch, that is a sign that it's an old string as well. 
If you've tried all of that and you're still having problems with a specific string or a specific area of the harp while you're stringing, you may just need to bring your harp in to a technician to have it looked at. And then finally, I'd like to mention some last few tips to keep in mind as you're dealing with your harp strings. The first tip is to recycle your strings. When I change out my fifth octave C, B, and A strings, I will keep the old strings and cut them up to use as string anchors for the higher register strings that require an anchor. You can also hang on to old or used strings that are still in good shape to use as practice strings if you want some help practicing tying your knot or if you have students that could use some practice tying the knot, keeping old strings handy for that reason is really helpful that I've found. Strings themselves are not recyclable to my knowledge, but oftentimes the packaging that they come in is, so make sure to recycle those. And if you want to recycle your strings themselves, you could consider making some art out of them or finding some other creative use for them. During my whole restringing process, I've been hanging on to mine and I'm trying to think of something cool to do with them, make some kind of art or something, because sometimes it just feels sad to throw them away. Also, a helpful tip that I found was to keep a string log. That way you could keep track of what strings you have, how much of that string you have left for those strings that you can have multiple uses out of in the higher octaves. And this way you don't find yourself in a bind where you're out of a string. You're always prepared to have at least one on hand. I've also found it helpful to write the date on new string packaging that I get. This way, if I don't use the whole string all at once, like for the upper octaves, I can keep track of how old that string is and be sure to use them in oldest to newest order. And that brings us to the end of our video about all things strings. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please consider leaving a like or a comment or even consider subscribing. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. If you are a harpist yourself or a harp teacher, I would love if you shared this video with your harp friends or your students so that they can learn some new stuff about harp strings or have a refresher if they already know. Thanks so much again and happy harping.